Hey, good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Hurricane Baptist Church. We continue our study of what the Bible says to the believer, and we moved, uh, we got through with what you must do to overcome temptations and sin. I got finished with that part of it. Now we're going to look at uh, what you must do to rise above trials and suffering. And we know that, boy, there's going to be trials and suffering in this life. We can't get around it. It's, we live in a fallen world, and uh, we're going to see how God can use some of these things. Uh, some of the trials, some of the suffering, and, and how it can help us. And I know that, uh, you know, we talk about that, how that we need to be strengthened. Our faith sometimes needs to be strengthened like an uh, athlete, you know, a weightlifter or an athlete that's, that's working out the body to make it stronger. And uh, what uh, one of the things is no pain, no gain. If you're not straining yourself, if you're not exerting yourself, well, then you're not gaining anything. And, and sometimes it's like that as a Christian. Sometimes we have to go through some hard times to get stronger. Uh, the problem you run into in the, in the athletic world, uh, people do that intentionally. They, they willingly give their bodies to do that. But in the Christian world, not too often do we want to give our bodies. And God, God say, uh, tell the Lord, you know, uh, bring, a, bring a trial into my life because I want to strengthen my faith. And so uh, we're going to look at James. And we're going to read James today to start with. And we'll be looking at James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. And uh, it tells us how we should face these these trials, these challenges we're going to have in life, and and we'll see that you know sometimes it's not so easy to do. We we like to sometimes think we're more spiritual, uh, more mature, uh, spiritually speaking, than uh, we are. So let's look over at James, and we're going to look at chapter one again, in verses two to four. He says, "My brethren, I count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations." Okay, so when you fall, count it all joy when you. And you fall into divers, different kinds of temptation, different kinds of trials. Verse 3 says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Verse 4, But let patience have her perfect, or finishing work, that ye may be perfect and mature, and entire, wanting nothing, or lacking nothing. Okay? And be complete. So, he talks about it there. He says, Now, brethren, he says, Let's just back up. He's talking to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad. So we have the 12 tribes, we have the Jews that are scattered. So there's there's uh, not that, uh, if you want to say that grouping, that uh, togetherness where we can draw support from one another. There are some together. But basically, we're not talking like a church family. And he says there's going to be times it's going to happen now. He says, I want you to look at the trials in your life. I want you to look at the challenges in your life. And I want you to, he says here, to, to count it all joy. To consider it joy. To, so how can I be joyful? Uh, for instance, I lose my job, or how can I be joyful if, if something happens, one of my children gets sick, or, or all kinds of things can happen. We can imagine things can come into our life that, that challenge us, and so, but how can I be joyful in that? Uh, the joyfulness, and you know, that's, a, that's an inner quality. Uh, happiness has to do with uh, circumstances. I'm happy if things are going right. I'm not happy if things aren't going right. And that's a human uh, emotion. That's how things happen and as far as being happy. But when it comes to joy, uh, we, we're to be joy. So we're to have that fruit of the Spirit, the love, joy, peace, and long-suffering and all those things. That's supposed to be part of our, our character. That's part of who we are. And so he's telling right here, James is saying to him, he says, uh, can it be, have this joy when you fall into di different kinds of uh, trials? So, so how can I have the joy? Well, we know that Jesus came. He had a joy facing what he was going to face. He knew he was going to go to the cross. He's going to be crucified and all that was going to happen. He's going to be buried, resurrected, and ascend back to the Father. But we have, we have the joy, I think, it's based upon that there's a purpose. You know, it's, it's one of those things when you're chosen to do something. Uh, sometimes we have a, uh, there's a job that needs to be done and, and there's a group of people. And so it says, I, I choose you. And it's one of those jobs that people want to do. Um, a lot of times, uh, you know, there's jobs and things that need to be done that nobody wants to do. But uh, now and then you'll find something that somebody really wants to do. And so when somebody, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy, but it's something that the person wants to do. So when they're chosen for that, they have a, have a joy. They, they're joyful about it. And uh, the idea that he's going to tell us right here, there's a, there's a purpose. We're not going through this trial. We're not going through this uh, testing for nothing. And God is not just throwing it out and saying, oh, let's just see what they do. No, he's, he's given us that trial, he's given that, that testing with the purpose in mind. Now, the devil does it, it causes us to sin. He wants us to, he'll test us, he'll tempt us, and he wants us to sin. But God doesn't do that. So he says here, that, and here's what you want to know. And it's, he says in verse number two, he says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So when we come to knowing, um, there's some things that we know about. Okay, we can know some, we can know about uh, uh, 
uh, how to judge the weather. We can know uh, something about uh, how to do a certain task. But he's talking about here, he says, this knowing here that we have, this, this uh, inner, inner, inward knowing, and this uh, kind of internal knowing that uh, there, I know and I believe that the trying of my faith is going to work endurance. Patience is endurance. So the testing of my faith, and what it amounts to is you take the Word of God and take the promises of God. And so we go through this, this test. And so I trust God. I know that this is to strengthen me. I know this is the purpose. It's not just to punish me. It's not just to, to make me suffer. It's not just to hurt me. It, there's a purpose. God has put me through this to increase my faith, to increase my endurance, to make me stronger. And uh, again, when l most Christians don't want to do anything like that, you know, God, uh, if somebody's going to have to have cancer or somebody's going to have to lose their job or somebody's going to have trouble in their family, I, I don't want to. I don't want part of that. Don't, don't, don't put me into that situation. Well, God knows what He's doing. He knows how it's going to work out. So He, He picks people that He can trust. God gives us the burden, and He'll equips us ahead of time. Even He'll provide things for us that prepare us for that day and for that time. Okay, so and that's what He's doing here. He says that He's going to give us this trial, talking about in verse two, this testing in verse two, that that are my this my endurance, my perseverance is going to. Uh, and get stronger. I'm going to be more uh, committed to fulfilling what God wants me to do. Uh, again, as we go through that trial, as we go through that testing, it's hard sometimes to stay focused on what we need to stay focused on. Uh, when you're when you're when you're in physical pain, it's hard to keep focused on what God wants us to do. And so, what we need to do is be prepared for these things. Now, we can't be prepared for all kinds of testing. We don't know where it's going to come from. We don't know how it's going to happen. But we know it's going to happen. And so what we need to do is be sure that we're focused on when it does happen, no matter which from which direction it comes, God has a purpose for it. There is a reason for it, and God is God is using me. You've been chosen. You've been chosen by God to be used in this situation. And so he's telling us right there, he said, because I want you to get stronger. I remember the story of Abraham and Isaac. Uh, the whole point of the, the trial, the test that Abraham went through, when Abraham got through, Abraham was more aware of how strong he was in the faith. His faith was strengthened. He endured it. He went through it. He persevered, and he stayed faithful. So when you and I face these times, when we face these trials, these temptations, we're talking about it, what I must do to rise above the trial and suffering. Okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fail as I go through it. I'm gonna stand firm as I go through it. And it tells us here then, because I know that God does all things right, and I know what He's wanting to accomplish. And so we're going down to verse 3. But let patience or endurance have her perfect or her finishing work, that she may be mature and entire, wanting nothing. In other words, I'm going to be, I'm going to be uh, mature, I'm going to be grown up. Uh, as we study Scripture and we see where Paul talks about it in different places, he talks about being uh, needing the milk of the Word. And then we talk about as Christians mature, they go into the, the meat. And that's what we're looking at here. As we go through the endurance, as we go through this persevering through these trials and this testing, I'm better prepared then for the things that's coming. I won't be lacking anything. And, uh, you know, when we come through the trial, when we get through the testing, it's uh, uh, to get through and look back. You know, and that's that a lot of our, our uh, if you want to say our joy, uh, that the peace that we get is we go through these times of life as a Christian and we get to we get to look back and see God's hand and how he works through all this because uh, he doesn't sometimes we have an idea of where he's going with the trial or the testing but a lot of times we go through things and uh, you know we have families that go through ministries uh, pastors and, and evangelists and their families they go through things and they, they wonder well why are you doing this Lord I know I, I read a, had a uh, incident back when I was in school. It's been like 25 years ago when I went to Bible school. And they had a, a, a preacher and his wife, and they started the church, and the church was going good. And all of a sudden, the, the wife come down with cancer, and she died, and said, well, Lord, what are you doing? This this church was going good. They were doing your work. Why would you do this to them? And, uh, and the church was supposed to be going, from what I heard, the church was a successful church. It was a growing uh, church, and it was doing a great work. And it wasn't but a couple years later, then he died of cancer. And you look and think, well, Lord, why did you allow this to happen? Well, I don't know any more of what happened up there uh, after that, but the idea is that you can look and say, why, Lord? And uh, people can use say, why me? And, of course, the, the famous quote is, why not you? And uh, so as we see here, what James is telling his people, he says, now listen, you're out there, you're in the world, and things are going to come. But you're going to have to stand firm. You're going to have to be uh, 
base the situation with the idea that I'm going to go through this in a way that's going to bring glory to God, that I'm going to grow and mature in my faith. And so as we go through these times and when we count on God, and, and this is one of the situations that we look at, remember you're not going through it alone. Uh, when this trial, when this test comes into your life, God is with you through the whole thing. You're indwelled by the Holy Spirit of God. We have the promises of the Word of God. And so we need to stay focused. And not only that, we have uh, the brothers and sisters in Christ. And so when we share our burdens and we can encourage one another, we pray for one another, uh, we talk to one another, we lift up one another. And so as you go through these times, keep in mind that you're not alone. Share, let people help you, pray, do the things that you need to do and uh, maintain your testimony to show that, to show that you trust God. See, that, that's part of this, uh, the sanctification process. As I go through the different times of my life as a Christian, to grow in my faith, and to show people that, hey, that I can, I can do this because of who I am and what I am. We want to do, do these things in a way that's going to uh, bring others to know Christ, to let them see Jesus and see that being a Christian is better. Uh, being a Christian gives us something that the world don't have. Everybody goes through the trials and temptations of life. Everybody goes through the troubles in life. Uh, the loss of loved ones, we talk about that. We talk about sickness. We talk about a loss of jobs. We talk about all these different things that happen in life. And it makes no difference whether you're a Christian or not Christian. And so as we go through these times, the people that aren't Christian, they see the Christians going through these times. And they see what, what difference does it make when you lose a loved one? How, how do you handle it? We, we cry. We mourn. There's nothing wrong with that. That's part of the, our... our uh, getting rid of our grief and dealing with grief. But how do, do we go on or do we stop? Do we just give up? And too many times we hear about the Christians that, that uh, when they lose someone or they lost, that something happens in their life, they just want to throw up their hands and say, yeah, hey, that's it, I'm done. Well, that's not what we're called to do. We are called from the day that I got saved, the day you got saved, from the day that the rapture happens or we die, we're called to walk as a Christian. And we see that uh, over here in James, we see it over in, in First Peter. Because we don't always have others with us. And like he's talking right here, these tribes that are scattered. So the idea is that we want to be ready to face the trials that's coming into our life, to be doing what we need to be doing, and to, and to allow ourselves to grow, to allow ourselves to mature, have the desire to grow. And again, as we want to prepare for some of these things, we need to be into the Bible. We need to be studying the Word of God. We need to be known uh, what God has to tell us, what promises He's made. You know, over in, uh, in uh, Psalms uh, 119, uh, what is it, but 105, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Not only that, Thy word have I hid in my heart that when the trials, the troubles, the temptation in life come, I have some place to go. I know the word of God and I know what God wants me to do. Uh, over in uh, Philippians chapter 4, he tells us over there, he says, uh, don't be troubled, or don't be, he says, don't be careful for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding so keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So we, we get that promise. He says, this is what you need to do. So when you face these trials, when you face these tough times in life, we want to be ready to, to share that with people, and we want to be able to, to claim that promise. And then what we do, we know the verse, but then you have to do it, right? So then you have to do what you're supposed to do. So as we just look at this portion of James, he says, what well, we're going we're to have the trials, we're going to have the testing and everything, so we're going to consider all these as an opportunity, as an opportunity to serve the Lord and to have this great joy and the growth in the Lord. So how do you face your trials and temptations in life? How do you face what's going on in your life? Are you, are you ready to just take a stand, to stand steadfast and not be wave tossed to and fro? Are you are you willing to stay focused on what God wants you to do and what He's trying to accomplish for it through you? Uh, we look at missionaries, they're out there in the field and they face a lot of challenges. And so they, they stay firm, they stay true to their faith because they know the call and they have all these people out there that they're witnessing to. They're trying to lead to the Lord. He's in these other nations and they're hostile to them a lot of times, but they know they have a call and so they're willing to endure it. Uh, we have people around the world that get saved and they're in the areas like Iraq and Iran and Afghanistan and those places, China, North Korea, you name many, many other but people get saved and they know what to expect. They know there's going to be persecution. When a Muslim turns and becomes a Christian, they know what's coming. They know they're going to face persecution. So we want to be sure that, uh, that we're like them, that we're prepared for it. 
Here in America, we don't know what we're going to face. It looks like more and more we're having more and more problems with uh, Christianity being uh, persecuted. But we know that uh, we know that uh, uh, the time has, has come that we need to understand who we are and what we're doing. So let's just pray. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, now's the time to do it. Don't be don't be afraid. Don't be bashful. But turn and put your faith and trust in Christ. Allow that shed blood of Christ to come to give you the forgiveness of your sins. Let's pray. Father, we do just thank you for this day and for this time. We just praise you for who you are. Praise you for what you've done and for what you're going to do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.